Uh, hi all, um, I will be presenting some uh, preliminary results from my research project that deals with uh, animal husbandry uh, during the late Roman and the uh, Anglo-Saxon period in Britain. So <coughs> very briefly on, uh, on my research project, I am uh, particularly interested in identifying and interpreting uh, changes uh, in animal husbandry during this uh, very crucial uh, <coughs> transition and uh, I'm doing so by looking at British sites dated to between the late 3rd and the 7th century AD. The changes that I'm looking at are local or larger scale uh, changes and they can be short term or longer term uh, <coughs> changes and uh, I'm doing so by doing running a archaeological analysis. Uh, indeed, the preliminary results uh, you will be seeing uh, deal with very local uh, context, but they do imply wider uh, economic uh, developments in Britain in this period. So as you can see, my, uh, the sites are located in uh, southeast England, in uh, more specifically in northwest uh, Suffolk, and uh, the, the three sites lie very close to each other. So we have Pakenham and Eklingham for the late Roman assemblages, dated to between the late 3rd and 4th century AD. And then I have a very large assemblage from early Anglo-Saxon West o. This actually is, uh, can be subdivided in four uh, phases. And notice that the uh, second subphase actually includes part of the first and of the third subphase from the site. So we can start with the results. This is the, the frequency of species for the, main, uh, for the main species, the main domesticates. As you can see, there are some uh, clear differences between the uh, late Roman assemblages here and early Anglo-Saxon West uh, In the late Roman assemblages, sheep, goat and pig are not very well represented, although sheep herding does dominate uh, animal husbandry in Britain in most sites dated to the pre-Roman late Iron Age. So uh, this pattern with a focus on cattle is found in uh, several other Roman sites in, in Britain, but it is not found uh, everywhere else in, uh, in the Roman Empire. If we look, for example, at the core of the empire in Italy, the many assemblages are, domi are dominated by a pig, actually. So it is interesting to see that when uh, the uh, Romans arrive in Britain, there is quite a drastic change from sheep to cattle, but indeed it, it does not imply the import of a, a standard package of, of cultural preferences for, for um, choices related to uh, animal husbandry. This uh, <coughs> focus on cattle has been explained in, uh, in different ways. It said that it could uh, imply some cultural influences. Uh, a major incidence of cattle is typical of the uh, Gallic and Germanic provinces of the empire where most of the soldiers deployed in Britain came from. And we will see similar evidence later with the butchery practices. But I think the main reason for this pattern has to do with uh, a new economic context. Uh, with, the, with the Roman Empire, there is a need to produce a surplus, an agricultural surplus, to feed the uh, taxation cycle, and this would imply um, the use of cattle for uh, the attraction force in the field. And indeed, we know from aging evidence that uh, cattle were kept until a very old age, being uh, employed mainly uh, for traction before being butchered. In early Anglo-Saxon West we see a much more generalized pattern with cattle, sheep, goat, and pig represented almost equally. If we look at the subphases from West o, the in the first uh, period, the fifth century, there is a major incidence of pig. And I think this is particularly relevant if we consider the following phase that includes the latter half of the 5th century. So it looks like this major incidence of pig actually uh, characterizes the very uh, first decades of establishment of, of this site. Pam Crabtree, who looked at the uh, site uh, before me in the, in the 80s, uh, suggested that this uh, major incidence of pig could be related to the need for the early sectors to produce food in a relatively 
faster, faster wave peaks can can produce meat in a very um, that they grow fast, they they reproduce fast, and so on. At the same time, we see an increasing importance of uh, of cat brains, sheep, goat, as you can see, and uh, this is also found at other other Anglo-Saxon sites. So it might actually be useful to see uh, whether we're dealing with sheep or uh, or goat. The reason why uh, in most archaeological reports they group together is that they are difficult to tell apart postologically. But some elements can be used. Here, uh, as you can see, I've looked at morphological criteria and I could only find three horn cores from one from Pakenham and two from uh, Anglo Saxon West Toe. So no other bone was identified based on morphological criteria. I've also applied biomedical criteria based on the PhD uh, research by Lenny Salvagno. As you can see here, there are uh, two ranges from modern uh, goat and from modern sheep individuals. And these are uh, my values plotted. And as you can see, they fall very well within the uh, range of sheep measurements. So it really looks like we do not have uh, goat almost at all at this, at this site. The reason behind this may be uh, cultural. We know that, uh, again, sheep herding was dominant in the pre-Roman late Iron Age, and maybe this had an influence during in the, in the Roman period and uh, husbandry practices in the Roman period. However, we may as well consider environmental variables. It could be that the uh, topography and climate of the British uh, lowlands would have was not very suited to goat herding, and therefore, although we know that goats were actually present because we do find them at some sites, probably uh, they failed to establish uh, stable populations. These are <coughs> butchery practices. Again, there are uh, some clear differences between the late Roman assemblages and the early Anglo-Saxon West Toe. Uh, here I consider cattle because it's the most frequent species and it was easier to analyze. So uh, as you can see uh, in the late Roman assemblages it is much more intensively featured <coughs> compared to early Anglo-Saxon West Toe and chalk marks are also much more frequent uh, as you see from these pie charts here. And also the chalk marks are usually located and the type of chalk marks are also very consistent suggesting very standardized butchery practices at the late Roman sites, which again is something we regularly find in other sites dated to this period. Again, with butchery practices, in the late Roman assemblages we also find <coughs> very um, specific products. Uh, there is, in particular, uh, a high frequency of cattle scapulae, which are butchered in a very standardized way, and uh, have been interpreted uh, in other studies as uh, cured beef shoulders. Uh, I have to say that the, uh, the incidence of scapula in proportion to all the other uh, anatomical elements of beef is extremely high and does suggest the import into the site of these uh, sort of hams, we can call them. Again, this, this product is not found in the pre-Roman British Late Iron Age and is not found, found in the early Anglo-Saxon period at all. It is found, however, uh, in the uh, northwestern Germanic and, Gal and uh, Gallic provinces of the Roman Empire, uh, down to probably uh, Switzerland is the southernmost example we have. So it does look like we have an import during the Roman period of, the, of some specific butchery practices. We also have splitting of long bones, probably for marrow extraction and other um, activities that suggest a full exploitation, a standardized full exploitation of the carcass. In early Anglo Saxon West, we have known or almost known of this evidence. This is uh, the estimation of the age and death for a sheep based on mandibular tooth wear. So these are um, age stages from younger to older. In, uh, we can see that in the uh, late Roman sites, uh, almost half of the animals were culled between stage D and E, which is when the animals reaches its optimum weight, so probably they were uh, raised and culled for their meat. 
some other animals uh, reached older ages, probably being kept for uh, uh, wool exploitation. If we move to, <coughs> to the first subphase of uh, early Anglo Saxon Westo, the situation is very different. We have a major incidence of very young animals, almost 60% being culled before the first year of age. <coughs> this could uh, imply a shift from uh, a generalized pattern that includes also the production of, uh, of wool to a more um, to, 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 to a major focus on the production of food stuff, in this case dairy products maybe, although uh, the animals were still kept until they were uh, more or less with almost one year of age, so that at least some meat could be exploited. At the same time, this would also feed the culling of excess animals before the winter. So a range of co a combination of different um, <coughs> strategies. And then, in the following subphase, mid fifth to mid sixth century, we have returned to a more generalized pattern. Uh, the amount of animals being culled uh, once they reach the optimum wage is more or less the same, but there is a there, there are many more uh, older older animals. And so maybe there was uh, again a shift, not only to, to uh, with a focus to on uh, the production of dairy products, but also for wool production. And uh, it may not be a coincidence that uh, in this second subphase we do find a neat increase of weaving implements at the site, although uh, in both phases we are dealing more or less with the same amount of uh, uh, deposits from sunken feature buildings, which is uh, where most of the material comes from. This is the aging from for cattle. We see a uh, in this case, I had to use the epiphyseal fusion of long bones because it didn't have uh, <coughs> enough mandibles. But again, we are dealing with age stages, more or less from old, from younger to older. As you can see, uh, the animals from the Saxon Westo are culled at a younger age, and suggesting again that there was uh, not such a great focus on uh, keeping older cattle for traction and uh, maybe for dairy, but there was uh, a major interest in the production of food stuff of meat. In, uh, if we look at the difference between the two first subphases at the site, 5th century, mid 5th, mid 6th century, there is a return to, <coughs> again, a focus that may be more mixed, not only animals being kept for meat, but also some animals being kept until older ages, probably being used in the fields or for uh, the production of dairy products. So in conclusion, in the late Roman sites, we are dealing with uh, more specialized husbandry practices. And uh, these were the results of cultural influences as well as large scale uh, economic context. In this case, the one of the uh, Roman Empire. So very long term uh, patterns characterizing Britain for almost four centuries. In early the Saxon Westo, we have more generalized husbandry practices, driven mainly by <coughs> local and contingential economic needs. So short-term developments, we've seen the need for food stuff in the early phase of establishment of the site, and then the move towards different strategies that uh, would have favored also the, the, the development of uh, craft activities. So the maybe obvious conclusion in, uh, in, in the end is that food production uh, certainly is affected by uh, cultural variables, but these would have been uh, adapted and shaped by other factors like the economic context and the environment, to a point that sometimes uh, <coughs> they may be overcome and uh, they would become difficult to detect and distinguish in the archaeological record. And uh, to archaeology, in the end, can uh, be used to contribute to detect such uh, such issues and uh, to identify these different variables. Thanks.